you had 90 days. Mm -hmm. You all of a sudden gained 50 pounds. Okay. What is the first skill that you would implement in order for you to lose that 50 pounds? I would 100% place my emphasis on having a plan around my nutrition. Understanding my caloric budget or my macronutrient budget, how many carbs, proteins, and fat there's different combinations. You can go for every pound or every gram per kilogram based on your lean body mass. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, more like a carb cycle. Go like yeah. five low days with my carbs yeah. and then have higher days on like Saturday and Sunday to something to refuel my tank, to give me energy yeah. to run off of because it's a we're talking, yeah. we're gonna, it's gonna be drastic. I'm yeah. probably gonna almost have to make thousand calorie deficit, if not more, right. to be able to drop that weight in 90 days. And I wouldn't advise this for everyone. I, right. for me. I would hire someone to hold me accountable. So at the end of every transformation that I have in our business, we always ask him if we were to just keep one thing on there mm -hmm. and we had to delete every single thing in our program, what would you keep? In my mind, I'm like, oh, it'd be their nutrition. Oh, it'd be their, their, the sweet workouts that we do. It's the leg days, the arm days. I found that 90% of the time, what they always wanted, and they think that's a huge success for them, was someone holding them accountable. It's much easier for me to let myself down than letting somebody else down. I'm gonna give a fifth one here. That's not, again, it's not fitness related. What would you do if you gained 50 pounds all of a sudden and you woke up and you had 90 days to lose it all and possibly get in the best shape of your life? This was a question that I got from one of my clients and it kind of sparked me because I was like, man, I have some really, really good concepts that I could choose from here, but I wanted to get another trainer in here. So Byron, welcome back, man. This is the number two. I think you're the first second guest nice. okay. returner that's not in my gym. But guys, if you don't know who Byron is, he's in a you have 30 seconds. Give me your like brag intro. So uh, so so they know who you are. Well, my name is Byron Ross. I've been personal training for 22 years. I'm a Las Vegas native. I have a degree in kinesiology with a minor in nutrition from San Jose State University. And um, health and fitness is my life. I love it. And yeah. I'm grateful that I get to work with people and get to do what I enjoy every single day. I love it, dude. See, that's how I should do all my intros. <laughs> I, 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 I shouldn't be introducing people because you know yourself more than, more than I do, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that you're super humble about is your, how fit you are at your age. How old are you now? 47. So, okay, so he's 47, and guys, he's more shredded than I am. So that's like <laughs> that's the other side that I wanted to include. So I want to build some context around this topic because okay. it'll give the, the audience more of an idea of kind of why we decided to do this. Mm -hmm. But I had an amazing conversation with one of my clients, and the cool thing is when you get these clients, they're very successful in some way because yes. not everybody can train and be able to do what we, what we do. Mm -hmm. So he's an extremely talented entrepreneur. And one of the questions that I asked him was like, hey, let's just say you lost it all. You lost all of your money in one day. But one thing that you did have was all of the skills, all of the mindset, even all of your connections are still there. Yes. How quickly can you get the, the one million back or mm -hmm. make your first million? He was like, oh, like less than 90 days. I, I'd even say probably 30 days. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's really quick. And then I, I had to change the, the stakes a little bit because it was yeah. too easy. I was like, okay, but what if you only had three skills you can use? Mm. And now it really changed the game yeah. for him. And he gave me his three. We'll separate that on a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but um, he gave me those three. Comment below if you want to know about it and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll answer it. But for this, just for just this context yeah. sake, I want to make sure we stay on topic. But he gave me his three. And then he flipped it on me. Mm -hmm. He was like, Royce, what would happen if you all of a sudden gained 50 pounds? What would those, and you had 90 days, okay. and you're only, and you still had the skill set, you still had the mindset, you still had the connections. What would those three skills be? And I was like, this is such a good topic. Yeah, and then, it on yeah. Good. and then the first person <laughs> that came up was like, I got to ask this to Byron because this is a Byron question that I got to ask because, <laughs> because you're on this like bodybuilding side. Mm -hmm. I'm on this extremely endurance and functional CrossFit style. And I think 
I think it's healthy to diverse our ideas. And maybe yes. we might have similarities. Mm -hmm. And to be in complete context, as we didn't script this at all. So I don't no. know what Byron's going to no. say. He doesn't know what I'm going to say. No. So this is going to be really exciting. And um, I guess we start out with there. Okay, so let's, let's start out. You had 90 days. Mm -hmm. You all of a sudden gained 50 pounds. Okay. What is the first skill that you would implement in order for you to lose that 50 pounds? With my knowledge and background, I would 100% place my emphasis on having a plan around my nutrition. Okay. First and foremost, that would be the biggest thing. Okay. And obviously, when you just asked me that question, I was like, well, what if I actually did that? Honestly, I have the utmost faith I would lose those 50 pounds in three months without a problem. Yeah. Because I've crazy? lost weight and the confidence yeah. is there. But nutrition will be first. And what I mean by having a plan around my nutrition is I'm big on helping teach people how to educate themselves about their nutrition and what it is they're intaking. Kind of like managing their budget, but managing your caloric budget. Mm -hmm. So one of my tools of helping clients with that or even myself that I use every single day and have for a while is tracking macronutrients based on the goal that I have. So if the goal okay. is a caloric deficit, number one, to make it sustainable enough for 90 days because it can't be too extreme because you're yeah. going to fall off, mm -hmm. but then make it so I can drop that weight over that time. Pretty mm -hmm. good with math and numbers. So we're talking 90 days. That's 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Do some simple math. I got to lose about 16 to 18 pounds a month. Oh so gosh, that's yeah. a pretty... It's aggressive. It sounds that's, aggressive. but That's then. pretty aggressive. But then mm -hmm. you throw in activity and all that stuff in there as well. But mm -hmm. it would definitely be geared around my nutrition, understanding my caloric budget or my macronutrient budget, how many carbs, proteins, and fat. Make sure I get enough protein so I can hold okay. on to some muscle so I don't become skinny fat. Um, and then base it around that. But nutrition would be first and foremost, having a plan to be able to get enough weight off every single week. Mm -hmm. And then which leads to successful months and doing that for 90 days. Okay. But then here's the caveat, still making sure I set myself up with a plan after those 90 days. So we don't mess okay. around and gain that way back. Let's go deep into those, those plans. Cause okay. you talked about micro, you talked about macros. Mm -hmm. Let's go over. So let's, I mean, how much you weigh now? Let's right now I'm about 175. Okay. So say. 175. So theoretically, let's just say you're two, what? Two, 225. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're 225. Yes. Give me, give me the macros you would prescribe yourself in terms of like carbs, proteins, fats, mm -hmm. right? But also give me um, the calorie number. Well, like what would that calorie number be, be for you? Or is it even a factor at the start? Like what's – For me personally, I've, that would matter mm -hmm. personally because I'm assuming there's probably a little more muscle under there still as well because right. I've been living this lifestyle using myself. Right. So a protein would be obviously of utmost importance because I still want to hold on to as much lean body mass as I can and just right. not the not just drop a bunch of weight. Okay. Weight and fat loss. So I would keep my protein a little higher personally because I want to hold on to more muscle and yeah. because of my age. So being that I'm able to consume at least a gram to about a gram and a quarter of protein per every pound. Okay. Um there's different combinations you can go for every pound or every gram per kilogram based on your lean body mass. Yeah, yeah. So then That's what I would I probably use. keep my protein right around like 220, which is what I consume now, okay. which would be right around the same if I was 50 pounds heavier, 220, 225. So then do some math. That's basically about 900 calories right there. Okay. And then I would create a caloric deficit that then would allow me like I said, we're talking 16 pounds to 18 pounds a month. Mm -hmm. Be super drastic. Yeah. So I'd be have to drop in, you know, do some math about mm -hmm. four pounds a week, mm -hmm. which is a pretty steep caloric deficit, not mm -hmm. including activity. Okay. So what I would probably do for myself is honestly more like a carb cycle. Go like yeah. five low days when my carbs and fats are really low. Yeah. And then have higher days on like Saturday and Sunday to something to refuel my tank to, to give me energy yeah. to run off of because that's going to be a drastic yeah, yeah, cut yeah. from my maintenance calories, which my maintenance, I know off the top of my head is like 2,900 to 3,000. Right. So yeah. it's a decent, we're talking, yeah. we're going to, it's going to be drastic. I'm yeah. probably going to almost have to make like a thousand calorie deficit, if not more, right. to be able to drop that weight in 90 days. Now I wouldn't advise this for everyone. 
Right. This is for me for this. Yeah, for this for this theoretical <laughs> for this theoretical thing. So it's going to be mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Yeah. But then have where I'm only taking in right around like fifteen to sixteen hundred calories Monday through Friday, and then do for me personally because I've had experience doing this with myself or my coach. Yeah. But then bump those up on the weekend to maybe about twenty two to twenty three hundred yeah. as a way to kind of refuel and then give yeah. me calories to run off of. Yeah. And then, mind you, as the week go on, that 15, 1,600 calorie deficit is going to probably still continuously go down mm-hmm. over time because my metabolism is going to adapt to it at some point. Mm-hmm. So we're talking pretty drastic yeah. <laughs> measures, you know, this, uncomfortable yeah. measures. This is one thing that you and I for sure agree on is like your prioritization on the protein first. Mm-hmm. The, the first thing you went and looked at was protein. Yes. Why why do you focus on protein initially at first? Like you didn't even think about the carbs initially. You were just like, this is how much protein I would get right off the bat. Well, just on average, most of us don't consume enough protein. The mm-hmm. Most Americans, most people don't have any idea how much they should be consuming. So protein, obviously, is going to help you hold on to lean body mass. Yeah. It's going to keep you very satiated. And what you mean by satiated is feeling full fuller mm-hmm. longer it's going to allow you to carry on and like i said the biggest thing it's going it's good for a lot of other health reasons but i hope you hold on to some lean body mass as you drop that body fat because the last thing you want to do is yeah. lose your lean body mass which is so important as we age not just for an overall look yeah. like it's for me it's always greater than just looking a certain way mm-hmm. like it's longevity as well so the protein is number one so then i understand the importance or the lack of importance or the lack of knowledge that people have around how much they consume just in general. So the first thing we go to is protein yeah. because when you're out and about carbs and fats are plenty. So many. And they're the easiest to eat. Too. Yeah. They're what right. you, most people probably want more than anything. But mm-hmm. when you actually are out eating yeah. or things that we truly crave typically is around carbs and fats. Mm-hmm. How often, I mean, you've been doing this a long time you hear people say, Wow, I just crave like another chicken breast. Never. Yeah, you got better luck of seeing Tupac at a bus stop. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, but you ask them, like, what are you craving? It's probably mm-hmm. something carb or fat dense. It may have a little bit of protein, mm-hmm. but typically protein is not what most people gravitate to or gravitate just, to. It takes longer. It's yes. more expensive. Mm-hmm. Right. Like yeah. the amount people are kind of scared of how to prepare, prepare it and cook yes. it. Right. So it's like I'm drawing from all my clients that are 50 pounds, 60 pounds mm-hmm. overweight. And this is why it gives us an advantage. That's why yeah. we're so confident on losing this. One of the first things that I do see is this ratio of amount of protein they're eating and the amount of carbohydrates they're eating. And it's like 80, 20, 80% oh, of it's easy. carbs, 20% easy. of it's protein. And they're like, I don't know why I'm losing weight. I was like, let's just do a quick shift on that really mm-hmm. quick. And then, and then we see this massive return. They start, one, they're not overeating. Yes. Number two, they have more energy to work out because uh-huh. now they're actually recovering really well. Yep. Right? They're not as lethargic mm-hmm. after each meal, so they're not just sleeping. They're active throughout the day, and they're active in their workouts. Yes. So, yeah, protein is huge. Let's go into this carb cycle because mm-hmm. this was new to me like five years into training. Okay. I was like, what do you mean it's carb cycling? Mm-hmm. Like describe why, why the carb cycling and uh, and and like, how does that impact your your productivity when okay. you're not on carbs? So f- for me personally, it allows me. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel for myself, so I can be mm-hmm. super aggressive for five days, knowing there's a reprieve. Yeah. But the carb cycle still sets up overall just a caloric deficit. Right. Yeah. It's just a way for myself, because knowing me and my coach knows me well now. Yeah. It allows me to go hard knowing then two days at the end of the week, I kind of get a reprieve. Yeah. And then I'm still hitting my macronutrients with nutrient-dense yeah. foods. It's not a free-for-all, go cheat meal. It's just more fuel in a tank to run off of right. compared to going, you know, 30 straight days of like no digging yeah. deep. And only reason why I would say in this moment, I would probably prefer a carb cycle for myself because I'm having to make such a drastic cut. Yeah. Now, if you if the scenario was shifted, you said you had six months to lose 50 pounds, I wouldn't go as drastic. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty difficult for my frame. Mm-hmm. But it, it's also context, too. If I had a client who wasn't very active at all and mm-hmm. came to me and said, I want to lose 50 pounds, well, typically they probably don't have the same habits that I have 
Yeah. And they have more weight to lose to begin with. Their body may be a little more receptive to this to be able to drop the weight. So maybe we wouldn't have to go as drastic. Right. So the carb cycling will be a way for me to go low knowing at the end of the week, I have mm-hmm. two days where it's going to be a little higher. So even if it's just like an extra serving of rice and, you know, maybe 10 or 20 extra grams of fat, yeah. then those are ways I can give myself more fuel than to go hard again for that next week yeah. instead of like 30 painstaking days of being, yeah. you know, half of my calories in a deficit, which for most people is not sustainable. Right. And even for me, after 90 days, I'm not sure I would want to sustain Keep that. cycling. Yeah. I'll be. I've done the 30 days low carb. Oh. I've done the 30 days with no carbs. Oh, my God. And, dude, like the, the backlash on that mentally, the backlash mm-hmm. on me binge eating is really tough. Yes. Is one thing that I want the you guys to really understand. Like we've done these tests so many times. Why yeah. we're so confident on what we would need to do is because we made those mistakes. Yes. Yeah. I agree with you. I would I would definitely cycle my carbohydrates mm-hmm. knowing at the end of it that I get a little bit some back. Yes. Right. And what's really cool about this and people don't talk about it is like when you when you dep- like deprive yourself of carbohydrates for like four or five days, when you get that rice and then when you get that like strawberry or like mm-hmm. berries, it tastes different. Yes. It's like it's like, wow, this is the best <laughs> berry I've ever had in my life. So there's that part of it that I that's like an unknown that I know that happens just yes. naturally for for me that I didn't know in the past mm-hmm. because we're so diluted with all of the sugars we're consuming so actually just adding this mm-hmm. you know like some people want the sweet tooth it was like you'll get the sweetness if you actually do this yes well on that and you know like my food wouldn't probably switch that much obviously mm-hmm. being so low during the week i'd be eating a lot more veggies more voluminous type foods yeah. maybe on the weekends i would add in like potatoes which you can get a lot of volume right. out of but also get a decent amount so off right. the top of my head you know i'm thinking if i had two 250 grams of potatoes mm-hmm. do the math that's only like 28 to 35 grams of carbs right. but that's going to sit a lot different yeah. but also have a greater caloric budget on the weekends mm-hmm. which chances are during the week if i was to eat potatoes on those low days i may only go like 100 to 150 grams which are only 22 grams or Actually, I probably wouldn't even do the potatoes. I'd be more yeah. along a spaghetti squash where I can eat three, 400 grams that are voluminous type foods, yeah. more veggies, um, maybe not even so much heavy on the fruit because yeah. they take up a lot of space. So do, yeah. more veggies and things that are going to be definitely nutrient di- dense, satiating, gives me a lot of fiber so yeah. that it can hold me longer and then keep those foods, some of those on the weekends, but then maybe add in more complex type carbs right. that the, that I really want and have, but I can get a little more volume out of also. I love it. Yeah. What are, the, what are the pro effects of carb loading for your necks? Like, does it change your workout? When, um, when well, you, you figure if I have these amount of carbs on the weekend, well, I'm still going to be asking myself to train intensely as well, mm-hmm. you know, because I want to keep as much muscle. So right. with a deficit, if you're lifting weights, you're going to yeah. hold on and retain more muscle. And studies have proven those who are active in the gym yeah. doing a caloric deficit will typically lose weight at yeah. a greater rate and maintain more muscle. So mm-hmm. having the carb buildup on the weekend and extra fats will then allow me to fuel my workouts probably at the earlier part of the week. And from experience, normally right around Friday, it wears off. It does, so then yeah, it's ready tired, to yeah. go again. So then it gives me energy to fuel my workouts throughout the week because the whole goal is still to train just as hard as I was, whether I'm in a really fed state at maintenance yeah. or surplus, and then still train as hard when I'm in a caloric deficit, which is right. a total reversal of what most people think. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just won't train as hard when I'm in a deficit. It's like, it's like nah. It's not going to be as productive. No. Yeah, and one exactly. thing that I do notice is like people break down so quickly. Yeah, and this is where they start the ban- they start manifesting injuries, mm-hmm. and it's like it's it's one of my indications that a person needs to eat a lot more is yeah. when they start seeing these little pains and aches. They think it's their mechanics, and I'm like, in for a while I thought it was mechanics, and then once you start seeing these people move, and then and then you dive in, you're like, what are you eating? Mm-hmm. And they're still on a deficit. Yeah. They were so addicted to that deficit, trying to lose that weight. But then what they what they fail to recognize is actually you're you're gonna hit a wall. Yeah, you're actually doing yourself more of a disservice. Mm-hmm. You know, they they get married 
to that system or I need to be in a deficit like no matter what. It's mm-hmm. like, well, if you truly have executed a deficit yeah. and you do it well, it's not that comfortable. You don't want to live there. Yeah. And I feel the reason why a lot of people are willing to live there or be married to that because they never truly executed it. You yeah. executed well, yeah. you understand the discomfort and you yeah. see how it's not sustainable. But then it's also detrimental, not just in the gym. It's mm-hmm. probably de- it's probably detrimental to your cognitive function. Right. I know when I'm cutting hard, it's I'll be talking to clients, I'll lose my yeah. train of thought. I'm like, what? yeah, Royce, right? You're like, <laughs> what is going on? Because yeah. you don't have that those carbs and that sugar going across across your blood brain barrier, mm-hmm. your recovery gets less, your sleep isn't as good. Yeah. So I equate it to adults are are just like babies. And when yeah. a baby's tired and hungry, it's fussy. Yeah. You ain't gotta be a rocket scientist. I don't have kids, but yeah. I've been around enough kids yeah. that have been hungry and tired. They're fussy. Yeah. What are adults? And then we're kind of irrational too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you don't think that well. So being in a deficit. If you've done it right, you probably don't want to live there as long, long as most people think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been in those states. It's hard it's very hard to be creative. Yeah. Cuz all you're thinking about is like I got to get food. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense like yes. for our our species to survive for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. You can't be creative if your body needs food. Yeah. Right? So naturally your body gets into this state of like that's all I think about. When truly when you're really hardcore deficit, I typically have to distract myself mm-hmm. otherwise it's like it just makes it extremely extremely difficult yeah keep yourself busy otherwise then you yeah. become food focused with which isn't a good thing either yeah okay so guys that's byron's byron that's his first skill we're gonna get you give you six skills because i have one too okay right maybe we might have some combos okay. but hopefully we can get six because i want like, them to use all six i'm excited to hear you right voice. So again, remember, we have the skills, we have the mindset, mm-hmm. we have the tools, and we have the collaborations, we have the connections. So I'm going to give you guys mine, and obviously there's a conflict here because I'm a trainer, mm-hmm. right? I would hire someone to hold me accountable. And let me explain why this is so important. So at the end of every transformation that I have in our business, we always ask him, if we were to just keep one thing on there, mm-hmm. And we had to delete every single thing in our program. What would you keep? And you were like, and, and you, in my mind, I'm like, oh, it'd be their nutrition. Oh, it'd be their, their, the sweet workouts that we do. It's the leg days, the arm days. I found that 90% of the time, what they always wanted, and they think that's a huge success for them, was someone holding them accountable. Mm-hmm. And not so much as like, hey, I need you to eat X, Y, and Z. Yeah. It's just like, hey, Byron, how are you doing today? Accountability. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I would pay someone knowing that I needed to lose 50 pounds to just hold me account. They don't even have to be the best trainer. No, they just have to be like, hey, dude, I need you to text me these three days. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to weigh in on Friday or Monday, depending on where my chaos days are. If my chaos days are on the weekends, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm weighing in on Monday. Yeah. Right. So and here's the reason why that uh, that this this con. This, this would be a big piece for me. It's much easier for me to let myself down than letting somebody else down. I could see that with most people. Yeah. Yes. Like I just, it just, yeah. it just, it, it, and it's, it's so fascinating to me. It's why I, when I say I'm going to do certain things, I'll tell it to my team right off the bat mm-hmm. before it even happens. Yeah. Because I just can't imagine me being like, Byron, I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that is like one of my biggest fears. So I know for myself, if I if if someone's holding me accountable, my percentages of actually getting this thing done in the next fifty or next ninety days go is substan is substantial, mm-hmm. right? I agree with that one hundred percent. So it's like, I know that it doesn't even matter what yeah. the nutrition is. I mean, obviously the nutrition would be. Mm-hmm. I just know I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna let this person down. Yes. I'm gonna keep going. And then when I'm thinking about that cookie. On Saturday or Sunday, I got a freaking way in to go see Byron, mm-hmm. right? Like, or yeah. it doesn't even have to be a trainer. Like, it's it can be your. I was literally just gonna say it that. could just be your best friend. I was like, hey, dude, mm-hmm. here's the job. I need you to like. I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars if I fail. Yeah. Right, but I need you to do these things. Can you just at least create this? And as a trainer, we know what that checklist looks like. 
right? Monday, yep. I need a text on this. Wednesday, I need this text. Friday, I need this text of mm-hmm. your weight. I like th- I know that I will be willing to to give that. Yes, for sure. And it doesn't even necessarily even have to be a monetary exchange. No, right? It can even be if you want to donate three thousand dollars to St. Jude's Hospital, if I mess up or yeah. whatever that is. Like yeah. make make something tangible, tangible but someone yeah. But then it has to be. You have to be accountable to somebody else aside from yourself. Facts. Because most people would be more than willing to let themselves get away with something. It's kind of funny you said that because I wouldn't hire a trainer, but I would tell my significant other or my nephew because they're two people I know that are going to keep it real with me. Right. And they're going to want that money, right? Yeah. And like for me, it wouldn't even be about offering money. They're both going to be like, so how's that weight loss thing going? You're like, dang it. Like, dang, you know, like, so the accountability factor is huge huge yeah huge for and it's it's one like i said i wouldn't hire a trainer yeah but i would tell one of my son you know my significant other or my younger nephew who i yeah. train with like yo bro this is what i'm doing right and he'd, he'd probably be like he would probably be like Are you nuts yeah. like i don't see what i'm gonna do you see me you yeah get this off bro yeah you know so I, the accountability i believe 100 percent exactly yeah so it's just it's just something I know about myself. Yeah. I think if you're an ex-athlete, mm-hmm. it's nice to know that you have to re- you, you have to do something. Yes. Right? Like, I could do all of these things, especially as a trainer. Mm-hmm. I know I can do all of these things yeah. now. But then if I'm so focused in and I'm like, hey, this is the goal that you said, that you, how are we doing there? Mm-hmm. It just keeps you in focus. We have so many – I have so many distractions. Yeah. I have ADHD. If I'm not focused and not, and mm-hmm. there's not someone else that's externally reminding me of what I actually came here to do in the next 90 days, it's very easy for me to be get distracted. And it's why I see so many people get distracted. Mm-hmm. Well, I think there's a part of also right? knowing yourself. Like this question is very eye opening for myself mm-hmm. because I've been blessed never to really struggle with my weight. Right. So I'm going to sit here and 100% know that. If I swung the pendulum that way, yeah. clearly something must have been really going on in my life right. that got me to not be as concerned about my training or my nutrition or whatever it is I'm going on. Yeah. So I would know if Byron swung that way after 47 years, yeah. there's something going on in my life. Right. I need to someone to help me write that ship mm-hmm. because I've never been that person before. So there's a bigger issue. Like, I'm going to need some help. I'm going to need some assistance. So, yes, I would tell my significant other and my nephew, but I would probably then have a therapist to help me figure out what helped me swing the pendulum so far Mm -hmm. from what wasn't my norm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just being honest because I've never – I haven't experienced that in my life. Mm -hmm. So there had to be something. Yeah. Yeah. The deeper uh, you can tell me explain this. The deeper you are into your training business, mm-hmm. if you were to like describe, because I thought it was about nutrition, I thought it was mm-hmm. about training, but the business that we're actually in is a purely accountability. Yeah, right. Like the knowledge is out there. It's 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 if you choose to use it or not. Yes. But I find that our job is closer just to remind them. Like mm-hmm. people, this is what Alex Ramosi says. Like people need to be uh, reminded more than taught. Yes. And, uh, and that really st- stood out to me because I was like, that's my whole job. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure, like if they want to know the science about it, we'll, 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 give, go, it we'll give it to them. Mm-hmm. But at, at the end of the day, it's just that reminder. It's like, ah, oh, you were talking to me while I had this scenario, right? Yeah. Just that, like, that extra real estate in your mind is enough to create sustainable changes because there's going to be moments where you're going to be tempted, mm-hmm. especially on those deficits. If you're yes. truly doing the deficits now, like, dude, I would like to know there's another, there's two more on this side and then there's one on that yeah. side. You're like, okay, cool. I'll listen to both of you guys, mm-hmm. right? So, Well, I think, you know, experience has surely taught both of us enough time in the game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's having empathy for clients, listening to them, understanding that people have a lot going on in their lives right a lot Mm -hmm. and we're not therapists yet at the same time they're coming to us for our help and assistance and yes they don't need to be taught a lot of them know like you said the info is out there they just need that reminder and then that accountability but then also the empathy that you understand that there's going to be ups and downs right 
for the most part. And, you know, I think it's also helping people gain an awareness of themselves and give them autonomy as well. My experience, like early on as a trainer, I wrote nutrition plans and people would, I'd ask Royce, like, what do you like to eat? Blah, blah, blah. Create the perfect plan. What's going to help Royce? Well, I'm tired of eating that, bro. You're three days in. You told me you enjoy these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I felt that once I help educate people on their nutrition, they can make choices for themselves. Right. So what what proteins does Royce like to consume? Right. Not about what Byron thinks is right. Yeah. What does Royce like to consume? What carbs? What fats? Mm-hmm. What's a schedule that Royce can sit stick to? Royce, not what Byron thinks is good. I gave you autonomy over your life, and then people are like, yeah. Oh, so I have choices. Mm-hmm. Like, well, yeah, this is what this about. And that took me a while to get to because when I mm-hmm. first became a trainer, I was like, well, they're going to come to me. They're paying me. Everyone's going to listen to me. Like, why wouldn't they? Right. Well, I'm coming from a standpoint. I was an ex-athlete where you didn't really have choices. Yeah. So we're going to run today. Coach, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I don't remember asking you. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to run. Oh, so you don't want to run? Well, Royce will. Right. I guess we'll put Royce on the field. Mm-hmm. Whereas now I'm working with real life clients who have a lot more going on in their lives who are running businesses, got families, kids, life issues. I mean, Mm -hmm. today, social media, what's going on, whatever it may be. And then having empathy and understanding and reminding them instead of just preaching to them. Exactly. Yeah. Another part, as we're kind of having this conversation around the accountability, it almost de-stresses the stress. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not the only one now in charge of me losing the weight. You know, now it's like, help me. Yes. You know, and and um, it's it, for some reason when 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 you have that exchange, that conversational exchange, monetarily exchange, it reduces the stress because now it's like, okay, mm-hmm. we're doing this together. It's not just all me. Yes. You know, and it's just like I didn't think of it that way, but for some reason, every time I hire a coach, and again, I never hired a trainer, just like we said, but I've hired therapists, Mm -hmm. I've hired life coaches to hold me accountable in my physical journeys. For some reason, every time I'm just like, I could just deload, Mm -hmm. you know? Or you have a team. You have a team. It's nice. (laughs) It's so much more exciting. Yeah. There was a quote. I was listening. I've been into this marketing thing. Um, I would listen to a podcast and then they were like, they had a conversation. I was like, what's the best part? Is it the journey or the destination? Right. And like, yeah, it's always the journey. Mm-hmm. And, and someone came from the side and was like, it's neither of those. It's the company. Mm. And I was like, oh, cause the journey could be a shit show. Yeah. But then if you had like your best friend with you in that shit, show, it's so much more exciting. Mm-hmm. So I never really thought of it that way. But then again, that's the accountability component. Yeah. Like when you have someone there with you in the suck, in the destination and in the journey, mm-hmm. even though the journey is good or bad, yeah, the company matters. It really does. So like I would rather experience it with someone in that process. Like if I gain 50 pounds, I'm bringing someone with me. For sure. Right? Like on, on the better way. But yeah, not, for so sure. it just seems more exciting. Yeah. Right? Like it's a story. You just feel like it's more worthful. Like whether it can even be just like, I'm going to document my 50 pound weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. That can be your form of accountability. That's, yeah. Having so. to commit to that and document it every single day, the highs and lows. Mm-hmm. It's easy to record when stuff is good. Yeah. When you're having a good day. What about when you're having a bad day and you're struggling? Oh my gosh. And putting that realness out there oh, like, gosh, instead yeah. of showing a facade like oh it was all good yeah. airy fairy the whole time like no that's probably not realistic yeah highly unlikely and i think that's why those guys really do succeed they document they document mm-hmm. it and they do it all the way through yeah and i think they partly succeed because of one they don't want to fail the audience yes whoever it is whoever's watching right so and they probably feel more connected and yeah it allows people to connect to that journey because more than likely someone else is experiencing that Mm-hmm. And so there's a relatability factor as well. Okay. So I, you guys, I just gave you mine, right? And we're going to ping pong this. So Byron, you gave me the, the macro, mm-hmm. the macros in nutrition being a huge component, account, accountability being a huge component. What's the second skill well, actually, that you, you would bring my in? second, or we agreed on the accountability. That was actually my second one. Like okay. having someone just knowing if I was, even for myself, like I said, the big issue is that I allowed myself to get to that. Mm -hmm. So knowing myself well enough, there had to be a reason because I've never been there before. Right. Did you have a nutrition coach too? 
You had like your a person doing your nutrition. With uh-huh. your so I have a so yeah. my coach does my nutrition and my training See, currently, and I yeah. hired someone seven years ago when I decided to compete. So right. I didn't have to think about it. Um, I don't have to overthink it. Yeah, and then I can still keep my focus on my clients. And so I went out and found someone. I did research who we were both in alignment with how he does things, how I was doing things currently. Right. And I passed the torch to him. And yeah. I've been executing ever since. And that's and that's what I mean, guys. Like mm-hmm. you're 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 listening to someone that has helped hundreds of people get a six pack, lose weight, mm-hmm. go through injuries. And that person that you're handling also has a coach telling him what to do. Mm-hmm. Right, it blew the first time I hired my first coach. That blew my mind. Like it really changed the game for me. Right, it made me a better coach. It made yeah. me a better athlete. Yeah, because you're creating that exchange mm-hmm. on a daily basis. So it's like that's when that's when I shifted from competing to collaborating. Okay, it was huge for me. Like the, at the highest level of competition requires collaboration. Yeah. And that's when I – and I'm just very competitive. Yeah. But then I was just like, okay, who do I need in my team? So yeah, I can hiring a coach a wasn't level. even an issue. I've yeah. been coached my whole life, Yeah, you know, playing sports. But even though I have a coach, like I respect my business partner a ton. Yeah. So I asked him questions about training and nutrition, mm-hmm. you know, because I want to continue to be open enough to accept feedback yeah. and still grow. Now that I have been competing – Two others that I have in my corners, my significant other and my nephew, they've both been along that journey and seen my physique change and been there for me. So I asked them now with my coach, my business partner, my significant other, my nephew, those are the four in my corner. Yeah. I still obviously I'm still learning and growing knowledge and I will lead things. But when it comes to my physique, no one else opinion matters. Right. Okay, my posing coach. Okay, five. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone else, because those are the people I directly work and talk with, if yeah. you're another athlete out there or someone you should do this, I don't remember asking you. Yeah. This is my circle. Yeah. It, again, it de-stress. It de-stresses. It, it, focuses, it, focuses, you, it focuses you in. Mm-hmm. And then you just, you're just more fine-tuned. Yeah. And it allows me to deal with my own inner conflict. It's like, well, do I look this way? Did I do everything right? You know, yeah. and- we can all make ourselves believe whatever we want, especially when you're in those moments. Mm-hmm. And I'm just speaking from the competitive side mm-hmm. in terms of like my training or looking the way that I want. Am I seeing my body, body progress? I see myself every single yeah. day. Yeah. You're battling yourself in yeah. one end, which requires energy. People think it's like, no, sometimes that energy battling yourself is way more expensive and you can utilize that energy <laughs> towards your training. Yeah. Towards your focusing on what you need to eat for that mm-hmm. day. Yeah. 100%. And just executing executing what I need to get done every single day and then still helping my clients. And then I have these other five pillars in my life that are say like, no, we see that you're on the right track. We've seen your progress. Mm -hmm. Anyone else that comes along, you haven't been around for the full journey. And, you know, it's obviously it's my personality. It's like, well, I don't remember asking you if you're not at one of these fives. And I will literally tell you, like, I don't remember asking you. I don't want your opinion. I have these five. I have my my coaches. I have my coaches. This is my... Inner circle. So yeah, the accountability honestly was my second thing. Oh gosh, now we got to think of on the fly. We're gonna get a sixth one somehow. <laughs> yeah. All right. So sorry. So let's ping pong back to me. So the second one. I don't know if this counts as two. So maybe this would count as two. Mm-hmm. I I honestly would do two a days. And would here's you? and here's the first day would just be walking or like the first whatever that is. It's yeah. just aerobic. It's very. Um, Assuming I'm 50 pounds, I can't like run no, right off the bat. Probably right? shouldn't. So I mean, I would my first day would just be like, okay, I'm gonna wake up in the morning. I'm just gonna go for a walk mm-hmm. for 45 minutes. That's one of my workouts. And then the second workout is induced with some type of strength training, right? So I can keep my muscle mass, keep my yes. my body burning at a high level, and plus I also enjoy that side of it. Yeah. Right. So that's what I would do. To be honest, I would do it. Every day, mm-hmm. like I just, I mean, I, I just know that about myself. Obviously, some of those walking days might be more mobility in rehab and yoga like days. Yeah, right. Or maybe it just might be even. You know what? I'm gonna go clean the garage for 45 minutes. Just stay active. Stay active for 45 minutes. And here's the reason why that 45 minutes of just like passive activity is so important. That's 30 percent of your caloric burn. Mm-hmm. Right. Your the neat, neat activity. The neat. That's 30 yeah. percent. So that's huge. 
Dude. So like calorically, that's where you're going to be burning the most. Mm -hmm. So on the other side is I actually feel very like mentally, I feel mentally free when I do these like long walks or just something. I'm cleaning the backyard or the garage. I have this psychological release mm -hmm. from that, that activity. Yeah. And then on the other hours, actually very intense. It's like, it's an intense workout, even though I do enjoy it. Yeah. I find myself more tense throughout it, right? So it's like, there's this physical side, but then there's also this mental side mm -hmm. that's being healed. So I would do those two a days. Yes. And not like a conventional football two a days where you're smashing yourself doing gasters the first hour mm -hmm. and then doing strength training the second hour. That's not what I mean by yeah. two a days. Um, one is just really towards the need activity, one hour towards the need activity, one hour towards the eat activity. Okay. Which is, if you guys don't know what that is, non exercise activity thermogenesis, mm -hmm. and then exercise activity thermogenesis, yes. which is only five to 10%. Very small. Right? So does that count as two or is that a one -er? That's a one because -er, I think, okay. you know, they're both very important in terms of overall activity. Yeah. Okay. I would definitely structure my training differently yeah clearly something has fallen off if i've allowed myself to gain 50 pounds so the way that i train as intensely would i would still train as intense as possible but with a, such a huge caloric deficit yeah i'm not sure i would be able to maintain my level of five days a week that i'm doing now right and still so i would take my me personally take my training down to three Intense days, yeah. still focus on my knee, getting some cardio, but then more rest and recovery. So then those three mm -hmm. days a week, I can go as hard because yeah. now I'm working on way less calories. And yes, right. I do have more stored energy, which is yeah, obviously yeah. I'm 50 pounds overweight. But right. clearly, if I've gained those 50, I must have dropped off the schedule that has kept Byron Ross yeah. in the state that he is now. So I have to be mindful and cognitive. I probably can't go back to what I used to do. Right. At that point. So like like you said, running. I love to sprint. Yeah. I'm not sprinting at two twenty or five four. <laughs> yeah. I mean I can't blow, but you blow out your kneecap. Probably, <laughs> probably not gonna be very much sprinter like yeah. looking. Yeah. And also wouldn't want to harm myself. So I would definitely shift and change my training. I would have to reevaluate yeah. how I did things back when I was in this one form compared to this new form. Mm -hmm. And just be real with myself. Yeah. Put my ego in my back pocket and take a step back and realize, well, somehow we got to this point, but now we get to work through this to move forward. To yeah. The goal would be to get back to who I once was. Right. As we're talking right now, I'm like, man, what would I have to change to gain 50 pounds? It would be all of the opposite things that we're talking about. Of course. About. I would have to stop doing all my yes. neat activities, which is like playing with my kid. Uh -huh. I would actually have to force myself on the couch to just yes. watch some binge binge watch a mm -hmm. bunch of mu or or shows. I would have to eat more chips and salsa. Yes. Like it's re like I'm as I'm thinking about it, it's actually really difficult to gain fifty pounds. Yes, yeah, that's why it's all of the things that I wouldn't want to do. That's why I said I know I would need to talk to someone because all oh the things gosh. that have made me successful over here. I clearly stopped doing those to get 50 pounds. Yeah, there's something more. There's something deeper. Yeah, that's bigger, happening. Happening that has gone on in Byron Ross's life to yeah. whatever that may be, you know. So I know if I've swung that pendulum from being super active my whole life, creating habits, activities, things that I truly love, enjoy, and am passionate about to then to have gained 50 pounds, something shifted. Something bad. Something in my yeah. yes. Something I haven't processed. Something happened, and I'm I'm not sure what that would be, but mm -hmm. I would would want to work with someone to help me reframe and, and reframe yeah. to shift back over here. So would that be your second one? Hire a therapist. Probably? Hire a therapist. Yeah. No way. Now that I think about it, you would. Yeah, dude. It's like you're suppressing something. Right, something you're like, happened. like something happened. You don't know how to manage your stress. You start to kind of just like you're you're depressed. You're eating chips mm -hmm. and salsa and sweets to, or you're, I don't know, right? So it's yeah. like something really happened to get to that state. You don't just gain fifty pounds mm -hmm. out of nowhere like that. Not, I mean, 
I'm not making an, ex- an excuse, but like if someone struggled with their weight off and on, they've been up and down, up and down, mm-hmm. then that's kind of their pattern. And, you know, yeah. maybe they still need some help as well. Yeah. But for someone like myself, who's never struggled with that, to then this yeah. huge pendulum swing, something mm. shifted. Yeah. And I would pray that those in my circle know that as well. Right. So my significant other, What's going my on, nephew, yeah. going on 25, he's been around his uncle 25 years. He's never seen Uncle Byron like this. Yeah. My business partner, who I've been in business with going on now 20 years. Mm-hmm. Her? Like, like give wow. it the weird dog look like, bro, like, what's going on? Right. My mother. Yeah. I'm very close to my mother. She's seen me be active my whole life. But now right. all of a sudden, she's seen her son shift, regardless of how long it took to gain those 50 pounds. Something doesn't yeah. jive. Yeah. So I would pray that those people would all be in my corner and would be supportive of maybe we need to go right. speak to someone, no matter how stubborn I am. Like, no, I'll just get back on my old program and do what I do. Like, mm-hmm. no, nah, bro, this ain't you. Mm-hmm. This is what, like, oh man, this is such a rich topic because as we're having this discussion, the exercises, the need activity, these are all like anti stress Mm -hmm. activities for me that we've taken for granted. Yes. We're not battling the demons because we have this component that we constantly practice. Mm -hmm. Movement is therapy. Yes. Right? When you picture someone that's anxious, you can almost tell what muscle groups are probably really tight for them, right? Their neck. Or if they're depressed, (laughs) like what posture they're Mm -hmm. in. And a lot of these movements change your posture. Yes. So we're able to release all this tension and we don't even recognize that. So it's like people think that we're in this shape primarily to lose weight, but actually, to be honest, now that I think about it, I have to work out this this many times primarily just for my mind. Oh, right, like it's it's all like yeah. yeah. If I'm stressed, I got to work out. If I'm depressed, I got to go work out. Like it's it's been such an amazing tool to yes. manage my stress and yeah. manage life outside of this. Oh, just I spend a you know. I'm blessed to be able to be in my gym sometimes by myself, Yeah, which I love the environment of being around a lot of people, but mm-hmm. also being there and training, it is a stress relief. I get to re- self-reflect on life, yeah. how I'm showing up, what I want my business to be like, what type of son I want to yeah. be, what type of significant other, yeah. what type of uncle am I holding myself accountable? Sometimes, or a lot of times taking that hard look in the mirror like, well, you're your own problem, bro. Yeah. Er? And then like, because now it's silence. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when I'm there, I don't have any music on. It's just me and my thoughts. And I get to manage those thoughts while I'm training as well. And it's like I'm not discrediting therapy. It's my therapy and how it makes me. And I'm all for therapy. Mm. But I figure out a lot of stuff that's going on in my life when I'm training. Yeah. Because so it makes good. me feel good. I truly enjoy it. But it's one of my ways of kind of releasing that energy or angst. And mm-hmm. even sometimes I catch myself – if I'm able to, well, I train before my clients, like as soon as I get done, like I'm a little more intense. Yeah. Like, cause I've thought about some stuff and I got all these things, these rats running yeah. around up there, but I'm figuring life out. Oh my but gosh. how I want my business to be. Yeah. I mean, you go down the line. And so it is, you know, my mental therapy for me. Yeah. It's what's helped allow me to get to this point I am in my life. Oh my gosh. So, guys, you guys are listening to this right now. You have two <laughs> trainers that's been training collectively. We've been training for 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. And one of those skill sets that we're we're telling is about therapy, is about hiring a coach, someone that's more accountable. We're not telling you to do burpees every single hour to lose that 90 pounds. This is is how deep this work is. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are so fixated about the nutrition, fixated about the the number of workouts you need to do, I'm going to tell you something much deeper. And it's once you unlock that deeper why and deeper meaning of what's what's holding you back from getting the body that you want, you actually will get that unlock that you possibly are looking for. Mm-hmm. These are two people that you're seeing right now that have the body possibly, but we don't even necessarily even focus about that. It's just a byproduct, honestly. It's it. It's so nuts. So okay, so we got we got the nutrition, which mm-hmm. is a huge component: yes. protein, macros. Carb cycling, we just went over mine is hiring and accountability, mm-hmm. um, the two a days, increasing your need activity, yes. like just move every single just day move, and active. exercise. And then we just went over therapy. Mm-hmm. 
I'm going to give a fifth one here. That's not, again, it's mm-hmm. not fitness related. Delete all, delete all your socials. Oh, yeah. I mean. would delete all of my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Delete all of my TikTok. I would probably just keep YouTube, okay. to be honest. Um, primarily because it's just more long form and there's a lot of how to's in it. Yes. I, I would I would probably do that because um it it just consumes my life at mm-hmm. that point. And I know I need to get the time back somewhere. Yeah. And it's really easy to get two or three hours back. Easy. And, <laughs> yeah. and the other side is like I know the type of dopamine it releases for me. You know, most most of the athletes that I see, this is something that I do with my athletes. One of the things that they're like, I just feel like I'm not motivated. That the first, that's the first thing they tell me to do. Mm-hmm. Or then they're, and then I'm like, okay, perfect. Right away, I'm like, okay, let's look at your, let's look at your social media app. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's because you're spending four hours smashing dopamine into your system, which is the molecule for you to do more. Yeah. And of course, you don't need any more. You don't need. <laughs> you've you've destroyed that <laughs> dopamine yeah. side of things <laughs> that you don't want to go work out. Yeah. So immediately I'm like, let's just delete that. Let's go see what happens in the next seven days. And guess what happens? They come in to work out. Because one, first they're just like, I'm just bored. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Right? And then the next, so it resets their dopamine system. And then they're like, yes, I'm just going to go work out and hang out with people. Then they get a better way to to release dopamine. Mm -hmm. So anything that's distracting me, it could be like my video games. It could be um, TikTok, Reels. And then uh, maybe it's Netflix. I would delete whatever whatever is distracting me that's giving me that artificial dopamine hit, mm-hmm. and I would just take it away. And I just know myself that if I'm bored, I'm going to be calling my buddies. Like, Yo, you want to go play basketball? Yeah. Yo, you want to go to the gym? And find other ways to, to use your time. Yeah, and it's typically very activity-induced. Yeah. At least I know that about myself. Yes. Anytime I take the electronics away from my son, the first thing he grabs is a ball. Yeah, he goes and be active. You see what I mean? So it's like, uh, I'm not saying that it's bad. Like no. I, like I love, I love the entertainment side of it. There can mm-hmm. be some valuable insights about it. But I'm just explaining to you, if I gained 50 pounds and I needed to lose 50 pounds, a lot of times I just it, I need to get that focus back and I yes. need to get that motivation back. Mm-hmm. And a lot, and I think a lot of times I use the Instagram to compare myself, you know, to feel sure. bad about oh, yeah. myself. Yeah. You know, and it's like it knows you. Yeah. It knows your deepest, yeah. darkest desires, and mm-hmm. it'll, it'll it'll put it right in front of you. It keeps bringing it up. Like you keeps can't be scratching beat that, at that, right? So it's like, so I so I know that about myself. And mm-hmm. you know, we've all seen all the studies on how destructive this thing can be. Yes. So, That'd be yeah. Yours. What are your thoughts about that one? I think that's huge because that could be a huge issue for a lot of people, and it could take up a lot of their time. Yeah, and the comparison game, mm-hmm. and I'm not making any progress. I'm not making any progress, or it yeah. could actually demoralize you a lot. Well, why am I not as change changing as fast as this person? Yeah, it's like as you watch their highlight reel, not taking into context maybe how long they've been doing something, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. It's already made you feel lesser yeah. about yourself. So <laughs> definitely, and a lot of us can spend a lot of time just reel after reel. TikTok after TikTok, yeah. listening and hearing things. And before you know it, you've raced it three hours. Mm-hmm. Within well, now you're tired or fatigued or you don't want to go be active or you don't want to focus on your nutrition or you could have been grocery shopping or doing something that's a lot more productive towards reaching your goals. You just yeah. burn three hours that you can't get back. Yeah. And you wake up and do it again the next day. Yeah, you ain't going to get magical hours back from trying to like – those are some things that you have 24 hours. We yes. all have 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And again, like if I gain that fifty pounds, I'm probably doing one of those things to do it. What am Highly I gonna, likely. If I can't exercise, what am I gonna do with my time? Typically like, something okay, else. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna play video games for fifteen hours straight. Typically, something else that's not as productive or destructive to you. Exactly. That's the reality. So, so that's like another thing. It's not a to do thing. It's a to delete thing. Yeah. Oftentimes, when I take away particular distractions for my clients, they start to lose weight. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things I, I I tell them. I'm like, hey, dude, I need you to throw away three things every day or delete three things off your phone every day, delete three contacts or whatever that is. Yeah. And 
what's fascinating about that that little habit is they start to just like lose weight they're like oh. every, and their house looks cleaner yeah <laughs> they're like they have had so much stuff in my garage now like take uh, they take a photo of their garage mm-hmm. and then they get somewhat smaller for some reason I, I think it's fascinating yeah definitely for sure i like that one okay so i got man those were my big three huh so my first one was what was my first one your first one was hire a coach. Hire a coach. Mm-hmm. The second one was two a days. The mm-hmm. third one was delete all all distractions mm-hmm. in some way. Yours was therapy. My nutrition. third one is boundaries. Boundaries. Okay. Boundaries. So I'm big on setting boundaries with myself and setting boundaries with others. Okay. And so I believe setting boundaries is huge for yourself because we can all talk ourselves into anything and believe anything. So okay. as an example, I feel it's very difficult for a lot of people to set boundaries with themselves and uphold those boundaries. But then if you can't uphold a boundary with yourself, how are you gonna uphold boundaries with your significant other, your family, mm-hmm. your friends, your coworkers, society in general? And since we're talking about losing weight, being around your family and friends is a part of life. Mm-hmm. And you get to set a boundary around, okay, when I show up to this get together and I need to lose this 50 pounds, that you would hope that they would support you in the ways that you're choosing to manage your nutrition or your activity level. So setting a boundary around that. And Mm -hmm. something like I've gone even further, and I just learned this term or this phrase from my significant other. Yeah. Um, I love donuts. A lot of my clients know I love donuts. So I had at one point like $150 worth of pink box donut cards (laughs) i chose not to carry those donut cards with me in my wallet and keep them at home because as a boundary to myself if the card is in my wallet and i have a thought of a donut i have free donuts i'm not gonna pay for donuts because financially it doesn't pencil when i got free donuts in my wallet so i'm not gonna pay i leave those cards at home Mm -hmm. so then now I have to make a decision. Am I going to go all the way home mm. to get that card, get there, and then turn around and drive how many ever miles to that pink box yeah. donuts? I'm less likely to stop and get the donuts when I know I have free donuts that are already paid for at home. So that's the way Byron sets one boundary with himself and food. Yeah. Went out to a meal last night with one of my clients. Took me, her family, significant, and my significant other out. I looked up the menu in advance. I knew where we were going because I've been there before, and I set a boundary. This is what Byron is going to have that fits his plan and his goal right now, and I stuck to that. So I found out that that boundary, I guess there's a term, which I didn't know before. I was just living. My significant other recently just told me it's called geofencing, and what it is is setting boundaries around things or to set yourself up for success. I never Mm -hmm. knew it was a tool. I just knew that Left to my own devices, if I keep those cards, because I have my wallet on me right now, with Pink Box Donuts, whenever I have that moment to go get a donut, I mm-hmm. have free donuts. Yeah. It doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. Which is even better for me. Mm-hmm. So I don't carry the cards. So literally, if I make that decision to drive all the way to my home to then stop, get out of the car, go in the house, find the cards from that box, because I got $150 worth. <laughs> And then go somewhere, then that truly was a conscious effort, and I get to own that. But not having that card, then it's setting a boundary around, okay, I just don't stop and eat donuts whenever I want. So then I've set boundaries around for myself and with others in my life as well. And I think that's huge for a lot of people because these things that a lot of people struggle with, with family, friends, social settings – Just the pressure or sometimes FOMO Mm -hmm. um, is tough for a lot of people. This, yeah. But then not keeping their word to themselves is even more difficult because then you feel like a failure. So me not carrying the donuts has kept me in alignment with myself. Mm -hmm. This is so good. The first time I learned about boundaries, Mm -hmm. someone, again, this is why hiring a coach and a therapist is really important. One of the biggest things that caused me to get to this like level of fitness was creating boundaries mm-hmm. now that I'm thinking about it. And here's how the boundary was set. He was like, I need you to pick a day where you don't work. And I was like, what do you mean? 
Like you've been working seven days. Yeah. You've, you've hit that. Yeah. Yeah. We are the grind set yeah. where you're like 80 <laughs> hour weeks, 100 hour weeks. Let's do this. Right. Yeah. You could work more. And sometimes I still get into that. But what, what the coach forced me to do was like, okay, I need you to pick a day and you need like, you can't even work. And I was like, what do you mean? The, the, everything's going to fall apart. Everything that you're doing now, you got to compress it in a shorter amount of time. Mm -hmm. And the way he explained this was, he was like, imagine playing basketball, but there's no hoops, there's no sidelines, there's no baselines. He was like, would you watch that sport? And I'm like, no, this sounds awful, man. Yeah. A guy dribbling a basketball for no reason? Just randomly. And he was through. like, what boundaries do is it makes the sport exciting. Yeah. Like it, now, now you have... Yeah, now you have four lines. You have yeah. the baselines, you have the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's add a few more. Let's add some hoops in there. Yeah. Let's add five more people in there. And then let's also add another five more people on there. Right. These are boundaries. Mm -hmm. So one of the boundaries he created was, I need you to work one less day. That was like the first time. And then he was like, I need you to work one more less day. And then I need you to work one of those four days, a half days. And I still need you to work, get all of those work done. Get all that done. Yeah. And it made me more efficient. And then mm -hmm. the other side was like, I need you to put all your family time. I need you to put all your workout time. And then now I need you to compress all your work time in between all mm -hmm. of those gaps. Byron, I'm telling you, it changed my life and I still continue to do it. And I still teach my coaches to do it. Because in the past, they were like, okay, I could take a client here. It was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. You don't have that up. You, you don't even have mm -hmm. 10 clients. You don't need to work seven days. Yeah. You need to compress that. And you yeah. need to abide by that. And what happens is like you start to become creative. You're like, oh, I can't. That's when I take my daughter to mm -hmm. dance practice. And then people actually understand. Respect they're, like, it. they're like, oh, yeah, let's do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Man. Yeah, they respect it. Yeah. And then, and then, dude, your premium gets higher. Like, I just don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. I can't. I don't have any. Like, this is, this is my rate. So, like, it just forces you to get super uncomfortable, mm -hmm. one, right? It forces you to also have like a different level of communication. Yep. It now like sets boundaries where you're able to work out. Mm -hmm. at, these are my workout times. This is my time. And then your clients also see that. They're like, this guy's scheduling his workout times. He was like, yeah, this is, these are my appointments. Yeah. Right? So it's like, man, the boundaries thing. Well, you get yeah. to teach people how to treat you, number one. Mm -hmm. And you can be an example for them as well because chances are they're struggling with boundaries in their life as well yeah put those boundaries in mm -hmm. one of the the things that he said he was like dude you're the most sloppiest entrepreneur i've ever met <laughs> this is the value of having a coach they'll just yeah. tell you straight up yeah. and i was like what do you mean i'm sloppy he was like he was like dude you have i can't I, I don't even there's people that probably work four hours and do more than you and i was like it was just blowing my mind, mm -hmm. but I needed that at the time because I'm over here, like I'm burnt out, I'm overwhelmed. You're burnt out, you're overwhelmed, you're anxious is because you're sloppy. Yeah. And by adding those slow barriers and slow boundaries, you get really good at things. Like if you had three hours to work out, you'd probably use all three hours. But what if you only had an hour? Mm -hmm. What 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 movements would you choose? Yeah, you figure it out. You narrow it down and make it more efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. It's the same. same that's why. Way. That's why we, as trainers, are like okay, you got these are your, your constraints. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's play around with these constraints. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah. Right. So I'm glad you brought that up. I would have never said it. this is why I wanted to do this without. I any mean, script. for me, it's been such a part of my life, and so just from hearing how I've been able to build my life, mm -hmm. and then being around my family and friends, a lot of stuff that. I hear from clients or or even my friends go through, I don't have those issues when like I travel with my boys back to San Jose to go to a game. My four my three other best friends all play football together. Yeah. I get up, go to the gym with my best friend still in bed. One of the other guys calls, like, where's B. Ross? They knew where B. Ross was. Mm -hmm. I was at the gym working out. Yeah. They don't give me crap about food and eating because I've set boundaries and they've seen how Byron yeah. Ross lives his life. You said something we, we had a conversation prior to this. I was asking about like your online training. You were like, yeah, they can't text me after 12. Yeah. That's a powerful boundary right mm -hmm. there. In the past, I'd just be like, text me anytime you want. And it's, don't get me wrong. I yeah. I struggle still with these things because yeah. I want to give good customer service. 100%. And I want to help the person. But then at the same time, if I never set that boundary, I can't be upset if this person keeps reaching out mm -hmm. to me 
when I asked them not to because I responded. Yeah. So actually, I encourage the behavior. Yeah, exactly. So it's not until you take that uncomfortable step that then you get to teach people how to treat you. And so, like, I don't get a lot of I don't get crap about food from people that love and know me. Yeah. Now, outsiders be like, well, do you ever treat yourself? Well, yeah, but I'm not answering to you. Yeah. yeah. Like the people who know me know that I set boundaries like yeah. I can go out and have a great time. You guys eat whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Byron can figure out how to make something fit or if, you know, I don't drink very often. Right. No one asks me if I choose to pull up and have a cocktail. No yeah. one's shocked. They're like, B. Ross does his thing. Yeah, yeah. My loved ones know or people who are in my circle because I've set boundaries and I've shown them consistently that boundary. It's not only practice the boundary sometime. I practice the boundaries consistency mm-hmm. because consistency is everything. And you teach people how to treat you, which then can help them Mm-hmm. teach themselves as well boundaries is a whole nother topic man i now man we could probably go over a bunch of stuff on boundaries but and, and clearly if i gained yeah. 50 pounds you i lost, lost those boundaries you lost it. Yeah, you <laughs> some lost way it. shape or form you're overworking now yeah overworking right? you didn't set up your times where you work out because you're like uh mm-hmm. yeah i can take you as a client there mm-hmm. i was like that's your prime workout time that's where you feel the strongest i, I know when i feel the strongest like it's in the morning yeah. Right. If I don't, if people are working out at my prime time to get super fit, that destroys my business too. Yeah. Right. Cause now I'm like, yeah. you don't even look fit, dude. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. For me to gain 50 pounds, I've lost boundaries with my nutrition. Mm-hmm. I've lost boundaries with my training. I've lost balance in my work life balance. Yeah. So boundaries have been clearly crossed, which swayed me that pendulum to swing this mm-hmm. way. So yeah. everything that I've spent working, to build over the, we'll just say the 22 years I've been out of college, I have clearly lost that. Right. So then those yeah. boundaries, which were boundaries, clearly weren't that important to me, and I didn't uphold them anymore for me to make this huge pendulum so swing. Good. Yeah, man. Now, now that I think of like, I have boundaries at night. Like I don't go to dinners after seven. Uh-huh. I was like, dude, there's nothing good that happens if I go out and dinner with you at mm-hmm. seven o'clock. That's like ca- alcohol, cocktails. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting good night's sleep. Yeah. Like, if you want to hang out with me, we're grabbing coffee or yeah, lunch. we got to do this. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, I didn't realize that. I also have boundaries around my breakfast. I don't eat till, like, 12. Mm-hmm. Because typically, I'm just eating muffins and cereals. Yeah. But then by the time 12 hits, I'm not I, – I want lunch. Yeah. I want, like, yeah. protein. So, it's like, man, boundaries is – that was a gift. I didn't – I wish we would have started that on the second one. <laughs> if you guys are listening to this right now and you got to this boundaries part, <laughs> well, I just, it's a game changer. It's allowed me to – gain the success that I personally have. Right. So I see the importance, but I also know the struggle Mm -hmm. from someone who hasn't built a lifestyle that that then entails. Right. You know, so then I think with the lack of boundaries, it sometimes can tend to lead you to chasing two rabbits and not catching one and not keeping your word to yourself. There's something to be said about when I keep my word to myself, how good I feel. Mm -hmm. And then what, help me uphold my boundaries is when I didn't uphold and boundary to myself, how bad I felt. And I overthinking things. Yeah. Whereas it's much easier. It's like, no, I met up with Royce. I said, I wasn't going to have a drink. Yeah. And I completed that test. I feel good. Yeah. I never regretted walking away going like, man, I maybe should have had a drink. There's more thought beating me up. If I go there and I hang out with you and I get like two or three drinks in, I'm like, then I leave like, damn, bro, you let your, come on. Yeah. Beat yourself up for that. Man. Again, yeah. And, and, you know, where it was much easier if I kept my word to myself, I walk out of there with my head held high. Like, yeah, I did that. Right. I did that. I said I wasn't going to do it. I kept my word to myself. Yeah. I'm proud of that. On the other side, two to three drinks in, mm-hmm. I shouldn't drive home anyway. But yeah. if I'm driving home, now I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. why did you even order the drink? You should have just said no. Yeah. Like, or maybe you shouldn't have came out. Like, right. then all this. All this backpelling, stuff. yeah, mental anguish. So I just found that when I kept my boundaries to myself, yeah. life was so much easier. Yeah, and sometimes for the, me, yeah, sometimes the coach and accountability coach will create those boundaries for you yeah. too. That you can't even unconsciously, see yourself. unconsciously. Unconsciously, yeah. you're like, I gotta weigh in on Monday, bro. I can't go out on Saturday and Sunday night. Yeah, like sorry, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, I gotta go train. Yeah, you know, and it like it, it almost gives them gives you an out too sometimes, right? Because you're like. This guy's on a, he's training. Like I can't, Yeah. they don't even, they don't even like invite you. 
at that moment. Man. So, so good. I want to add this one because knowing that I've seen the 50 pounds weight loss, I've seen the 30 pound weight loss. This is more of like what to expect. Like we, we know it's going to hurt the, the it's going to hurt. The first 20 pounds are going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. Right. Your palate's going to change. Things are, if you're 50 pounds overweight, man, you're probably crushing a lot of fast food or that's not a mistake. That's not. Yeah. Like, so like now you're, you're shifting from this, like, how long does it take to to reset your palate? Do you think? Because now you're you're going from probably junk food to mm-hmm. whole food. Yeah, more whole, nu- yeah. more nutrient dense, mm-hmm. whole foods, less calorically dense foods. Yeah. Um, I would say if you are able to stick to the program the first thirty days, you can definitely That's see a change say. in your yeah. your palate and the things that you enjoy. Whereas if you were to shift back to that for a day or two of eating mm-hmm. more calorically dense foods, it probably wouldn't sit well with your stomach. Yeah. I mean, because that's a huge pendulum swing once again. It's huge, yeah. If you gain 50 pounds over X amount of time and then you turn and drop 20 pounds, let's just say in a month, that's a huge swing as well. Mm-hmm. So there's been some really drastic changes. Because like you mm-hmm. said, your first statement, gaining 50 pounds is not a mistake. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to put this in context. Unless there's some serious underlying health issues going on. But if there is no major health issues. Something went wrong, yeah. You earn that. Yeah. (laughs) That's not a mistake. Like 50 pounds is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. Even if it's over a year. Yeah. That's four pounds a month. This is the mindset part. I don't know if it should be because we can carry our mindset, right? Yeah. Knowing that I'm going to lose 50 pounds, I know the first 30 days are going to suck. Facts. Not because of the workout. Like, I understand the workout. I know because of my palate. Right right now, if I drink soda, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's so sweet. But in the past, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's like, I know I know that part's going to, like, chicken's going to be bland. Yes. Rice is going to be bland. Potatoes mm-hmm. are going to be bland. Berries are going to be, like, mm, it's just plastic. Yeah. You know, I know that stuff's going to change. But now, like, in my state, where we're eating a lot more whole foods, mm-hmm. Those things are like gift, like acai bowls. Yeah. Like those are like, whoa, this is like the tastiest food I've ever had. Yeah. Right. So it's uh if you understand going into it, the first 30 days are gonna be and then knowing that, hey, it's actually gonna reset. Like things meat tastes like meat. You don't need ketchup for everything. Yeah. Sweet potatoes don't need ketchup. Tons of whatever. Yeah, you whatever. Like you actually it. will yeah. yeah, like your palate will reset. Mm-hmm. Things are gonna taste amazing. Just like, like get through that. Yeah. Go through that uncomfortable mm-hmm. part, which is I feel what a lot of us struggle with is being uncomfortable. But like you said, once you get past that after a little while, like mm-hmm. my thing is I love chicken fingers. Yeah. While it tastes good going down at first. Yeah. After like 10 or 20 minutes, it doesn't sit as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so then I ask myself, was that worth it for mm-hmm. that? short window of oh that tasted good for then a couple hours of that don't feel good are you looking to jumpstart your journey or just excited to take on a new challenge over the next 30 days we are running our first ever cohort designed to get you easy wins in your fitness goals over the next 30 days the team and i are going to be providing nutritional guidance fitness support and best of all you're going to be surrounded with like-minded people that are looking to grow if you've been looking to jumpstart your fitness create new habits start your weight loss goal or maybe your workouts just been a little bit stale and you want to challenge yourself this cohort is going to be for you now if you're ready to take on this challenge go to our show notes below sign up to our free move 30 challenge and i'll see you guys there now back to the show peace all right we're back (laughs) it cut off a little bit guys but we're back on because i forgot to hook the battery but let's do this so where did we leave off we were leaving off on (laughs) on switching your palate yeah switching your palate okay we were at the being uncomfortable okay and mindset and then being on the other side of that and you know once again maintaining those boundaries upholding those boundaries yeah Okay, I love it. So let's sum this up. Okay. So guys, if you're listening to this right now and you applied all of these six massive skill sets, right? Learning how to eat macros, 
higher on protein, carb cycling. That was one set. Mm -hmm. The second one was um, hiring someone. Yes. You know, just having someone holding you accountable, whether it's Mm -hmm. a trainer, a therapist, a life coach, someone to report to so you don't let them down. That's another big skill set. The second one was two-a-days, not in a way that you would think like the football two-a-days. Yeah. One hour for neat activities, just yes. moving every single day, and one hour with exercise. Doesn't even matter. Weightlifting, mm-hmm. pull ups, push ups, Zumba. I don't care. Be right? active. Be active. Move. Move. Yeah. Right. Um, the f- the third one was, oh, delete your socials. Yeah. So you gain your time back, and also you reset your dopamine, so you're motivated to mm-hmm. work out. You find ways to work out. The next one was uh, boundaries. Mm-hmm. I'm missing one more, man. Well, mine was to, for me personally, would be to the hire therapist. a therapist. Oh, yeah. So a coach because clearly yeah. that pendulum is swung. Yeah, there's something mentally going there's on. There's something in there. mentally going on yeah. for Byron. Yeah. So that would be important enough for me to realize, like, I need something to swing that pendulum back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is, as a trainer, I think we are therapists a lot mm-hmm. of times because these people tell their stresses Mm-hmm. And they reflect. They're like, huh, I never saw it from that perspective. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's huge. The therapy yeah. is a huge component to it. So guys, if you pick three or four of these things and try to accumulate in the next 90 days, and you are in this state where you're maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds overweight, yes, I honestly think you're going to make a massive dump mm-hmm. towards losing that weight. So yeah, if you do that, if you did all six – of those things, what are the likelihoods you think you could lose all 50 pounds? I think very likely because right. you're giving people, we're giving you tangible tools right. that yeah. you can implement. Yeah. And if you were to do these somewhat with consistency, it should set you up for success. Mm-hmm. These are literally tangible tools, mm-hmm. clear, described tools with examples that I'm sure most people can implement in their lives. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you and I are no different than them. Yeah. Guys, we're going to put this these six things on the show notes. And you know what? If you decide to take this path, comment below that mm-hmm. you're like, I'm going to try all these six. And if it doesn't work, just 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 throw some hate comments on yeah. there. <laughs> but I really do think it's going to help you guys big time. If it doesn't, you know what? We'll have a consultation. It'll yeah. be completely free. Like just, And um, we'll figure it out for you. But I really do think it's going to help you guys out. I want to end on this because... If you are 40 years old and you don't seem like you're losing the weight, Byron and I did a, a an episode. It'll be linked up here on what might be happening in your 40s and if you're uh, a, a man, men, or, or it could be women too, women, yeah. right? So did we talk about women in that one? It was, more towards males, yeah, it was more but towards males. But actually, yeah, it, rela- it relates it, to women as well. There's a relatability. I mean, yeah. so, it just is what it is. So, guys, yeah, watch that one. If you guys like this episode, you'll probably like yes. that episode. And uh, Byron, we'll probably get you on a third one at some I'm point. I'm excited, man. I, yeah. I love this. I love this. Guys, I'll see you guys later. Peace Thank out. Thank you for watching.